Hello and welcome to Real to Real. 50 years ago, Father Robert Wagner and two women religious set out to bring the Word of God to children and adults with special needs and abilities. Their work led to a new ministry for the Diocese of Springfield and helped to break down barriers for people with developmental needs. Now, a half century later, as it marks its jubilee, Jericho, the Bureau for Exceptional Children and Adults, continues this important work. Kathy Harrington reports. Today we celebrate all the many opportunities that people with different abilities have been able to achieve and the blessing that they are to all of us. Greeting the community before the Jubilee Today Mass, Sister Joan Magnani reflects on her unique of, point of view of Francis Jericho, one Father divinely inspired. God inspired, God whispered <coughs> into the ear of his priests that I need a special ministry. <coughs> I need a special ministry in the Diocese of Springfield. And God spoke to one of his brides. That bride of Christ is known as Sister Jones. <laughs> and the two of them said yes to God. With a younger brother born with special needs, Joan felt she had a calling when she entered the Sisters of St. Joseph, a teaching order, at the age of 17. And I believe, you know, my faith increased because of working with people with different abilities. I mean, they are so accepting of whatever, and the Word of God means so much to them. They love God from the bottom of their heart, and it just really, you know, fostered my vocation. And Sister Joan had been teaching religious education to people with disabilities since 1968, when she met Father Robert Wagner at a religious conference at UMass. He was in charge of CCD as the priest were years ago. And so a parent with a disabled person went to him and asked him, could her son make his first communion? And so he said, sure. Jericho began as an office in Northampton in one of these big houses on Bedford Terrace. They were helping six families before moving to a home on Whitney Avenue in Holyoke. That was a house that we got for a dollar a year. And um, we set everything up there and um, we had um, the garage was made into a classroom and um, the living room was made into a, um, the sacred area and um, and f unfortunately we had a fire there and we lost everything in 1977. Fortunately no one was there at the time evening classes had already ended and so Jericho used space at Mount Marie for a while. Then in 1978, Father Wagner found this estate on Northampton Street in Holyoke, and it became the new home for Jericho, the Bureau for Exceptional Children and Adults. At first, the focus was on religious education and celebrating Mass. Father Wagner always wanted to celebrate Mass no matter what. This area right here where I'm sitting, we had Mass. Sometimes we'd have like 50, 60 people in here for Mass. After building a pastoral center for religious education classes, fundraising got underway for the Celebration Center with some help from Arlo Guthrie. When we built the Celebration Center, we built it so that we could train people to go to Mass. But it wasn't easy in the beginning because um, many of the pastors weren't comfortable having people with disability in their parishes because, you know, they make noises and they talk out. Parents find the Celebration Center is more welcoming we went to the first Mass and he flapped his hands and whooped it up and not a single eye in the place turned to stare, nobody whispered, and it allowed me to relax and really take in everything that Father was saying during the Mass. Taking part in the Mass is very special for members of the Jericho community. Everyone remains seated because... You know, the people in wheelchairs aren't able to stand up, so we don't stand either. They take on the roles of greeting people and passing out bulletins, helping with the music. And there's Mary, who is blind and reads at Mass. Endure in Israel as long as the heavens are above the word of the Lord. Thanks to God. They're totally 
immersed in the Mass when they come here. For people with special needs and limited abilities, social opportunities were few, so the staff at Jericho created some, including cookouts, twice-monthly dances, summer camp, the beach, and pilgrimages. Families came to enjoy the grounds, the shrines, the Way of the Cross, and the equestrian center. Things are totally different now than they were in the past. You know, we'll have to, we, we're, and we're looking towards, you know, what the needs are out there now. You know, what are we going to be doing for the next 50 years? It is constantly evolving. But Linda LaPointe is the third executive director at Jericho. Still... The mother of a special needs child, she learned how to be an advocate for Jacqueline, and now it's her mission. One of the things that's happened since Sister Jones' days is three laws have been passed to support people with disabilities in the country. The three are the Americans with Disabilities Act. It gives physical access to buildings, seating, and accommodations. IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which means schooling and being able to take part in the life of the school. And the Rehabilitation Act, which prohibits discrimination on the job. The Sisters of Providence who used to do the home visits and consult and say, you know, possibly you could get this service or, you know, they helped with medical and things like that. I um, compare that to the advocacy that we do where families come in here and they don't know what to do either about their child's education, they want recreational services, how do I do transportation, any of these things. I feel really strongly that this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. So it's a wonderful thing to have that mission come to you and then be able to see it through. LaPointe says it was a different generation that sought to institutionalize the disabled. Now she says so many young people go to school with those who have special needs that there's greater understanding and acceptance. There is plenty for Jericho to celebrate at 50 years, but Father Donatus says this day is a day for giving thanks to God and... And we pray that the doors of Jericho will continue to be open. Yep. For Real to Real, I'm Kathy Harrington. Next week in the second part of her report, Kathy will introduce us to some of the families that found Jericho to be a life-changing ministry.